Years ago, when I came into the ministry, I used to pray that I'd be able to do this kind of thing. That I could stand on the platform before uh, unbelievers and, and give them the gospel of Jesus Christ and see miracles, signs and wonders in his name. You know? And now it's happening. So um, if you have a desire and you've been praying for it, uh, be encouraged. Just keep pressing in and you'll see those things come to pass in your life. Can I have an amen? Amen. All right. You think we should move this? Yep, I'll move it. Uh, Toby, will you give me a hand? And then also, if there's anybody that needs paper and pen for notes. Yeah, uh, just to jot yep. down, if, if nothing else, just the scripture references. Terry, would you mind passing those out? Oh, thank you. And while we're getting organized here, if you want to open your Bible to uh, Acts chapter 10. I'm very excited that you're here tonight. You know, the Bible said that, that the Lord gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And I like the way it is in the Amplified Version, I believe it reads, uh, that the Lord gave these gifts, ministry gifts, for the equipping of the saints so they might do the work of building up Christ's body and church. And so every Christian is called to have a part in building up the body of Christ, in reaching souls, making disciples, uh, and bringing forth God's glory on the earth. Uh, nobody is called to just warm a few. Well, I mean, now we don't want to put down warm a few. I mean, coming to church is very, very important. Amen. <laughs> we don't want to put that down, but we want to expand our definition of a disciple to be more biblical. And a disciple is someone who is following the Lord and fulfilling his call. You know, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you sit in the pew. No, he didn't say that, did he? Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Amen? Amen. And, and he said, you, know, you are the light of the world. Praise God. And uh, that's, that's who you are. You are the light of the world. So shine brightly. Because as you shine, you know, with the light of the glory of God, people will see that light. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's really what God is doing in this day. And I, I, I really see that this is the move of God. It's among all of God's people. He has a purpose for your life. It doesn't matter if you're older or younger. Uh, all of us have purpose. Thank God for the even the children that are here tonight. You know, we had a we have a, a believer school of ministry. We had it in our hometown last year, and uh, we had our students were varied from the age of 11 to 81, and. Uh, Everybody came and received and was encouraged and so a lot of good fruit come out of it. And so, uh, you know, I know I'm, I think of one man, I, I testified of him that he was encouraged and praying in the spirit through our class and he began to pray in the spirit on the way to work and then on the way back. And he just did that week after week, praying, praying in tongues on the way to work, praying on the way back and as, as he drove to work, he had about a 45 minute commute to God really used that in his life. He began to do like a breakthrough in his life. And he said he started to lay hands on people and fire started to come out of his finger. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said, I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so he said it was like fire began to come out of his fingers when he prayed for people and they would be healed. And he's just been seeing it and keeping track of it. He's amazed what God is doing. So God is igniting ordinary believers uh, to do the work of the ministry, and we want to encourage you that uh, you have an anointing from the Holy One. 
And uh, God has anointed you for a purpose, to really make a difference in this world. And he has a great plan for your life, so we do encourage you in that. And I want to mention concerning also the Believer School of Ministry. Um, we have many of the lessons online. We have a, a manual of 12 lessons, Introduction to Ministry. Uh, it's all in a PDF file on our website. And not only is the manual there, but all the lessons are available in video and audio and all the notes. Okay? So if you're taking notes there, just write uh, Shanklin ministries.org that's our website shanklinministries.org or pick up a card or something back there that's got that website on it then go to the menu and click on it where it says believer school and you can download all those materials you can listen to the audio or you can watch the video and you can be trained uh, for God's work in the ministry. Because we, you know, we're having two lessons here, last night and tonight, but there you can get 12, and then there's actually some others on there too. And this, these lessons are a little more advanced, so because we've been here, and we've taught a lot of the basic, the more basic ones. And so now we're uh, moving forward. You're, you're going on to uh, your sophomore class here. Okay? So, um, but anyway, I know many of you haven't been to all these classes, and you can get them online, and I would encourage you to avail yourself of those things. Uh, I want to mention one other thing on the website, too, that, uh, and maybe we'll have the link on Facebook also, but if you go on the website, and there's a search box there, type in these words. The Holy Spirit is working in me. The Holy Spirit is working in me. And you'll, there'll be a post there that has confessions concerning the Holy Spirit. It has many scriptures about the Holy Spirit and meditations concerning the Holy Spirit. And at one time in my life, I used those. I just, day after day, would confess those scriptures and confess those truths about the Holy Spirit and confessing that he's working in my life. Because we have to line our thinking up with God's word. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. So if we just go on with natural thinking, not a lot will be accomplished because our mind will block what God wants to do. So the meditation of the word is one of the ways that we can be transformed. The Bible said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to think differently. We have to realize that we are not just a natural people. Amen. Uh, I think one scripture says, quit me like men. In other words, stop, stop acting like ordinary, unchanged people. You're different. Amen. You're the body of Christ. Do you hear me? Yep. You're the body of Christ. Jesus is Christ. We are the body of Christ. So we are to carry his message. We are to carry his glory to those around us and to the nations of the world. That's your destiny and that's your purpose. Praise God. So those are some things that will help you. Those uh, Believer School and Ministry lessons. And then get, find, that, uh, find that meditation on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working, on me, uh, working in me. In fact, I think it's there in PDF. You can print it out. And use it in your devotional life. Just as long as the Lord leads you. I found in my devotional life, it's always evolving. It's always changing. God's leading me to do different things in different seasons. Because he's, he's working things uh, in me. And I believe that uh, our relationship with the Lord should be living and vital and exciting. And, you know, it's, it's not boring to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. I found that out. If you're following the Lord, it's not boring. It's exciting. There's some real challenges but it's pretty neat what God does. When you see God moving, you know, when you see a little boy that was deaf and dumb start talking, uh, you get pretty excited. Yep. Amen. And there's no reason that can't happen right here. Yep. And right where you work and where you live. Because I found out he's the same here in the United States as he is over there. Yep. 
That's right. We were just in Iowa in, uh, in June, and there was a lady that, uh, it was a church that I had been at two years previously. And she said, you know, when you were here last time, you prayed for me. And she said, I had a mental illness. It's called schizoaffective disorder. I guess it's like schizophrenia, I don't know. I really, I never heard of it before. But anyway, that's what she had. And I prayed for her, and she said, after I prayed for her, her body began to react negatively to the medicine she was taking. And I assume it was with doctor supervision. She went off her medicine. And she is now off her medicine, and she was on disability, wasn't able to work. She's off disability, and she has a job. Praise the Lord. And not only that, she's very happy. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, Amen. and forever. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, lady, here, right here in this church that was healed of severe depression. Uh, so I love those things when God doesn't work on, on the inside like that. Also at that church in, um, in Iowa, a woman that had severe arthritis in her hands was healed, happy, all the pain was gone. Another woman with a rotor cuff injury was healed, waving her arms in the, in the air like that, happy. Another lady with a bone spur was healed. Well, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, his power has not diminished. Can I have an amen? Amen. He's not gotten weaker over the years. And what he did in those days, he'll do in these days. Jesus said this. He said, the works that I do shall Ruth do also. Yep. Amen. And greater works than these shall she do because I go unto the Father. So he's talking to you. Amen. Amen. For the mighty works of God. So, Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your precious people that are gathered. We thank you for the opportunity to uh, delve into your word. And we just, uh, we do really thank you, Lord, for these people that have come out. They, they want something from you, Lord. They want to learn. Mm. And they want to grow. And they, they want to minister. And they want to be a blessing. So, Father, thank you for ministering to us through your word, teaching us things maybe that we have not learned before. Are encouraging us in things that we already do, but we, you know, they've kind of grown dim. Mm. And uh, so I pray there would be an awakening in those things too. Yes. Pray your blessing on the people, Lord. And I pray that, uh, those that are here with sicknesses or infirmities or problems on the inside or the outside, they would be healed tonight. Yes. And that you would be glorified, because Lord, we know we can't do a thing without you. Yes. So we just pray that you would be glorified tonight in Jesus' name. All the people shouted, Amen. Amen. Well, let's just uh, begin reading in the 10th chapter. And we're going to begin in the 34th verse. And what we're talking about here is Peter's sermon to uh, Cornelius and his family. You know, Cornelius was the centurion that supernaturally was uh, led by God to get a hold of Peter. He was not a Jew, he was a Gentile. And of course, the, even though Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all nations, uh, the Jewish Christian believers were uh, not game to do that. I mean, it was, it was uh, really foreign to them, so to speak, to actually go and preach to Gentiles because everything in their culture, everything in their background says, no, we won't do that. Amen? How many are familiar with that thought? Sometimes everything in our culture, amen, everything in our tradition, everything in our background says, no, you can't do that. Amen. But what we've got to do is renew our minds to the Word of God. And so Peter and his friends weren't really doing a good job of taking the gospel into all the world. So God supernaturally gave this man Cornelius uh, in a trance uh, a message to call for Peter to come. And then, just about simultaneously then, uh, as Cornelius sent these men to go and get Peter, Peter's praying and he falls into a trance. Now that's, that's kind of strange. We don't think of that as part of Christianity, falling into a trance, but that's the kind of thing that can happen. God gives trances and dreams and visions and things like that, and it's scriptural. Acts chapter 2 said that uh, you know, young men will see vision, old men will bring dreams. 
So I'm in the vision, I'm in the divisions because I'm a young man, right? Yeah. <laughs> but Peter had a vision. He had a he fell into a trance, which means his his senses were suspended. It was like he was in another world. He was in the glory world. And this great sheep was brought down with all these animals, unclean animals, which according to the law, he was not supposed to touch or eat. And uh, then the, the voice came and said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, Not so, Lord. I have never touched anything unclean in all my life. And the Lord said, Don't call what I have made clean unclean. And it was, it, it was not about animals. It was about people that the Lord was cleansing the Gentiles through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So he opened Peter's understanding and gave him uh, enough insight to respond to the call and the invitation to go and minister to Cornelius and his family. And so we're going to look at the uh, sermon that Peter preached to these Gentiles and learned something uh, about the healing anointing. In verse 34, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word, ever say the word? Word. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now notice especially verse 38. This is kind of a key verse here in our lesson. How God anointed. Everybody say anointed. Anointed. Everybody say God anointed. God anointed. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. It's an interesting thought how God anointed Jesus. You know, we might uh, wonder about that, that thought, about that scripture, how God anointed Jesus. How many know Jesus is God? Yep, amen. Amen? Yep. He was God in the flesh. Amen? And he is God. But you know, when he came, the Bible tells us he emptied himself and he became a man. So, so Jesus came to this earth, was born of a virgin. He emptied himself of his former glory and he became like us. And like, uh, like it says, he was all God and all man. It wasn't that he was half and half, you know? He was still God, but he was man. Amen? So he was a man, therefore he needed to be anointed. And when you look at the life of Jesus and, you know, his childhood and all, you know, of course, God was working and he, you know, he, he, he was with the, the, uh, the doctors of religion, you know, and so on. And he, he said, I must be about my father's business. And he was being, he increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God. And man, God was working in his life. He was growing, maturing, and developing as a man. But there came a time, as we talked about, you know, but God was giving that vision for you too. About the dove came down, right? The Holy Spirit came when he went to John's baptism. And John said, well, I need to be baptized by you. You know, how, how come I, I should baptize you? And he says, we must fulfill all righteousness. And Jesus was baptized. And then when he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove. He was anointed mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him. That's what the anointing is. The Holy Spirit coming upon you for his purposes. And then after that time, you begin to see the miracle power of God in Jesus' ministry. And that shows us that we also can be anointed by that Holy Spirit. And we also can see these miracle signs and wonders. You know, so many times people think that when we talk about Jesus, he's just in a, a real special class. I mean, he, was, he was proving his divinity right through the, these miracles. But remember, he emptied himself, became a man. He only did those miracles because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that came upon him. And then we begin to see, you know, he turned the water into wine. And he, you know, he, he began to 
heal the sick and raise the dead and all these miracles that came forth, he was anointed. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, when Jesus uh, went into Nazareth, you know, remember, they, they brought the book to him and he opened, the, he opened up the, the scroll to read and he, he went to Isaiah, the 61st uh, chapter, and he began to read. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the liberty to the captives, to open the blind eyes, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So when Jesus began to talk in the synagogue about his ministry, what did he talk about? He talked about the anointing. He basically, if he wanted to sum it up, he said, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Amen? He said, I'm anointed to preach. I'm anointed to heal. I'm anointed to set free. You see, this is what the anointing is about. There is an anointing to preach. Uh, and there's an anointing to teach. Jesus went about uh, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all, the, all, all those that were sick. So he had a ministry of teaching, preaching, and healing. What's the difference between teaching and preaching? Teaching is explaining. So when you teach, you explain the scripture. Preaching is proclaiming. All right? Uh, remember, even when Jesus saw the woman who was bowed over, could not lift herself up, she had been bowed over for 18 years. He announced to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. He preached it. <laughs> he proclaimed her freedom. In preaching, we proclaim liberty to the captives. We proclaim the truth of God's word forcefully. Amen. We, we release the truth that sets people free. It's like, a, it's like a boxing match that the devil has no chance. Amen? Because the gospel is the power of God and salvation. When we evangelize, we preach the gospel. And we explain too, but it's more about proclaiming that liberty, that faith can come. And teaching is more explaining. And there's an anointing for both. Amen? And sometimes we teach, preach. But there's also an anointing to heal. That's kind of what we're focusing on tonight. There's an anointing to heal. Okay? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went around doing good and healing. See, that anointing healed people. And it said he had healed those who were what? Oppressed of the devil. He didn't heal those who were oppressed by God. Sickness is not from God. Sickness is from the devil. And the anointing is anti-devil. Amen? Yep. And the devil is anti-anointing. That's why it's called the spirit of anti-Christ. It could also be just as easily translated anti-anointing. Mm -hmm. The devil's against the anointing. God, the devil doesn't want you to learn about the anointing. The devil doesn't want you to walk in the anointing. The devil doesn't want, to, want you to find out who you are and what you have and what you can do. God does not, the, the devil doesn't want you to learn about the anointing of God. Yep. But too bad, we're going to learn. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so God anoints it. So interesting to me that we're going to see, and, and uh, just, just to back up just a second, first of all, he opens his mouth, he says, I perceive that God... Uh, no, shows no partiality. First thought there is uh, the gospel is for everyone. Yep. That's the lesson that Peter learned. And then he said the word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. Second thought there is there's peace through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the message of the gospel is that God sent his son so we could be reconciled to him. Yep. Amen. So here in Peter's message, he's, he's preaching the gospel message. We're going to, as we read on, we'll see other elements of the gospel message that he preached, including that Jesus died on the cross 
for our sins and uh, that he rose again from the dead and that those who receive him will receive remission of sins. Very basic facts of the gospel, right? He gave that message. And, and, and here's what I found that when we preach that message, the Lord confirms it. Yeah, amen. You know, I, I, I've gotten away from thinking that, that it's something to do with me. Mm -hmm. It's the message that I preach. He confirms the message yep. about Jesus Christ. Amen. And he confirms it with signs and following. Signs following him at Mark chapter 16. He said, these signs will follow them and believe. And the last verse is there, uh, the last verse of, of the uh, 16th chapter. He said, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. And you saw it on the video tonight. Yep. And we see it everywhere we go. Sometimes it's with healing, sometimes it's changed hearts. But the word works. It produces. Mm -hmm. So Peter, when you examine his sermon here, he's got all these elements in. He's got he's giving them the gospel. And of course, uh, God sent, you know, when he when Cornelius, of course, Cornelius was a man after God's heart. He prayed, uh, he fasted, uh, he gave alms to people. He, he had a heart for God. And God saw that. But yet, see, Cornelius, in spite of all his good works, was not saved. He needed, why? Because he needed Jesus. Yep. But you see, God in his mercy made sure that he got Jesus. But how did he do that? Well, send for Peter. Because the Lord knew that Peter would what? Preach the gospel. And as Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God and the salvation. So when you look at this sermon, you see the preaching of the gospel. So when you think about ministry to people, uh, pattern yourself after this. Share the gospel. Share the good news of Jesus Christ, how people can be forgiven. How God will touch their lives. God will do miracles in their lives. And you know, but what's interesting to me here is when Peter gives this message of the gospel, yeah, he talks about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He's alive, and we can receive a remission of sins, and you know, he's the judge of the quick, the quick and the dead, and all these things. But in, the, as he brings this forth, he says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were for us of the devil. So when Peter preaches the gospel here, he preaches healing. He preaches the miraculous. He preaches the supernatural. He lets them know that, hey, here's a God that does something in your life. He brings healing. And God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Well, we call it this. We call it he preached the full gospel. He preached the full message. Amen. He preached the whole thing. He didn't give them a half a gospel. He gave them the whole thing. And going back to Jesus' ministry, as we said, in Luke chapter 4, what did Jesus say when he introduced himself? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to open the blind eyes. So you see, it's a supernatural ministry. It's a supernatural gospel. It's a supernatural Jesus. Jesus is alive to do these things today. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so as Peter preaches it, he preaches the miraculous to them. Supernatural power of God. God anointed Jesus. Jesus preached, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Peter preached, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Amen? And, hey, guess what? The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Mm -hmm. He's anointed us. All right, so let's read a little bit more. In verse 39, we talked about some of this already here. And we are witnesses of these things which he did both in the land of Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. So there's his death. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen by God, even to us who uh, are who ate and drank with him 
after he arose from the dead. So this is called being a witness. Peter tells him, hey, you know, we saw that Jesus was alive. He, he was dead, but we saw he's alive. And we ate with him, and we drank with him. You know, folks, this is called being a witness. You are called to be a witness. How many have seen God do awesome and miraculous things? Amen. Praise God. Well, just tell somebody. Yeah, amen. That's called being a witness. <laughs> amen. That's what I did tonight. I told you about the deaf boy, the blind lady, and the lovely lady jumping up and down that had back problems. And the lady with the neck. You know, they, the reason they have neck problems is because they carry everything on their heads. Yeah. So they got all this compression going on. God touched her, and she's going, wow, I'm so happy. But you see, that's a witness. That's a witness. We need to tell people what God is doing. The Bible said we are to show forth the praises of him who brought us out of darkness into his glorious light. It gives people hope to hear these testimonies, to hear the miraculous things uh, that God has done and is doing and can do for them. Praise God. And it causes faith to arise. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Praise God. Amen. That's good news. You see, whosoever believes in him will receive Remission of sins. Remission means the getting rid of sins. So folks, through Jesus Christ, you know, you may have sins. You may have committed sins. You may have been uh, embroiled in sin. Sin may have been your lifestyle. You may have uh, fouled up big time and, and been fouled up big time. But I come to tell you, there's someone who will forgive your sins. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And through that blood that he shed, there's cleansing from every sin. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. You do not have to earn your salvation. You do, not have to, you do not have to earn your forgiveness. You just need to repent of your sins and he will forgive you and yep. cleanse you. You just need to put faith in him and he will accept you and forgive you and give you a new life. He did it for me. Yeah. I didn't deserve it. But he gave it to me anyway. And I thank him for that. Yeah, amen. How many can say amen? Amen. So here's Peter preaching this sermon. I love his sermon. How many like Peter's sermon? Yeah, amen. Good sermon, amen? That's good preaching. All right, so now verse 44 it says, While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. All right, so here Peter's preaching, and uh, the Spirit falls on the congregation. And the, those that were with Peter, the, the, those that were traveling with him were amazed because why the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured was poured upon the Gentiles. Because they thought, well, God's only going to bless Jews. You know, we're, we're the chosen people and those Gentiles. I mean, they had that in their culture and their mindset so much. But here God says, uh, let me show you what I'm going to do. And he pours out his spirit upon these people. And they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, how did they know that these Gentiles had received the gift of the Holy Spirit? What? They spoke in tongues, right? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. It's a sign of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues, a supernatural gift of speaking in another language out of one spirit and magnifying God. When you get filled with the Spirit, you get happy and you magnify God. Amen. This man here is always magnifying God. I was trying to take a nap this afternoon. He was magnifying. <laughs> the people outside heard it too. Oh, that's good. They let me know. 
<laughs> and praise the Lord for that. And I'm the same way. I love it. I, I say praise the Lord. And sometimes people go, they, they, they don't know what's going on. But I tell you, I'm not going to stop. So then he says, can anyone forbid water that they should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they asked him to stay a few days. So God actually laid a foundation in their life. They believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then they were baptized in water. So God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's the anointing upon Jesus. Now, let's just, uh, let's go to Mark. And uh, let me try to just cover some ground here rather right quickly. But I want you to see the anointing operating in Jesus' life. Mark chapter 5, I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Right. About 525. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had, was no better, but rather grew worse. But when she heard about Jesus, everybody say she heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. By the way, has anyone heard about Jesus from you? <laughs> Good. Amen. We need to tell people about Jesus, amen, because amen. that's what will change their lives. Amen. amen. Somebody was talking about Jesus because she heard about Jesus. Yep. See, someone was witnessing of the miracles of God. And it said when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, <clears throat> immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned about the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said unto him, You see the multitudes thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Well, I want you to notice a couple things. She said, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. She heard about Jesus. She believed in Jesus. Hope arose within her heart. And she began to believe something. She began to believe, if I just touch Jesus, just his garment, I'll be made well. One time I heard a testimony about uh, a woman that said, if I could just get my son under the, under the tent of this evangelist, he'll be healed. And, you know, she drove and drove and drove and, and uh, wasn't able to afford a, a hotel room, so when she got there, she could only stay for a while and then she had to drive back home with her child. And when she, arose, when she arrived at the tent, there was no meeting. It was in between meetings. And so she came and she said, well, where's the evangelist? And said, well, he's not here. But she looked and the child was healed. <laughs> because why? Because she got him under the tent. Yep. She said, if I can just get him in that tent, he'll be healed. Amen? Yep. Sometimes we think it's about a certain person, you know? Yep. But it's about God. He responds to our yep. faith. Yep. Right? Yep. And she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. So she pressed through the crowd. You know, we could... Many times I've preached on this, so we could preach for a long time on this, but I'm just going to do it, get it to you quick. But she pressed through the crowd to get a hold of Jesus. She touched his garment and said she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt it. You know, you can feel 
the anointing. There's a tangibility of the anointing. It's not just some figment of our imagination. There's a, there's a reality of the anointing of God. All right, reload. We're wearing out batteries here. Perfect. Yeah, we're getting long winded. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm actually taking this away from her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where were we? So she felt in her body. Can you hear me? No. No? Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. How about now? Yeah, there you go. All right. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Then Jesus, of course, he couldn't see her. You know, in the natural, he didn't know what was going on. But all of a sudden, Jesus says, who touched my clothes? Who touched me? And the disciples said, Jesus, everybody's touching you. This crowd is thick. Everybody's rubbing shoulders with you. He said, yeah, yeah, somebody touched me. Somebody touched me with the touch of faith. And he felt the power go out of him. See, there's a tangibility of the anointing. Last night we talked about cultivating the anointing and, and developing that in your life, you know. And it grows and develops, you know. And then you lay hands on the sick and God gives you faith and the miracles happen. Amen? This power flows through your hands. That's why it says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And God does other things through the laying on of hands. But in this case, Jesus didn't lay hands on the lady. The lady lands, laid hands on Jesus. In fact, just on his garment. And the virtue, the King James says virtue, and it's the word in the Greek is dunamis. It's power. Power went out of him. And healed her. And notice then what Jesus said to her. You know, he turned around and looked, and she was afraid because she wasn't even supposed to be out there according to the law. And she came to him fearing and trembling, told him, told him what happened. And he said to her, daughter, daughter, hey daughters, are you daughters here tonight? He calls you daughter. It's pretty mean. And you guys, sons, family members, he loves you. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. What you believed about me and said and acted upon has made you whole. See, we can help people to have faith as we tell them about, about Jesus. Faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing well, the by the word of God. Somebody told some of you about this meeting tonight. Praise God for that. That's the business of the kingdom. We should be telling people what's going on. God's wanting to descend on this area like a dove, a Holy Ghost power, and do miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of the Holy Child Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can I have an amen? Amen. Now turn your Bibles to Acts in the fifth chapter. Or, I'm sorry, the third chapter. We're just looking at a few miracles tonight. And, and the anointing, by the way, the anointing operated in the Old Testament too, but we don't have time to go into it tonight. But you might remember, uh, was it Elisha? The boy had died, and Elisha laid on him. But through that contact, the anointing went in him and raised him from the dead. And the Bible tells us that Elisha died and put him in a grave. And during a battle, a man died, and they didn't have a place to bury him, so they lowered him down into Elisha's grave. And he was raised from the dead. That's a pretty good anointing when your bones, after you're dead, will raise somebody from the dead. <laughs> See, Elisha, his time had come, but with the other man, he was young and he, he could live some more. So he was risen from the dead, amen? By the anointing. Everybody say the anointing. The anointing. Now, in the third chapter, of the book of Acts, because this is a transition now. We 
Because you know what happened is that Jesus did all these miracles. And then he told his disciples, the works that I do shall you do also. Yep. And then he said, but wait, wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. So they waited in Jerusalem, and in the second chapter of Acts, we see that the Holy Spirit came upon them like a mighty rushing wind, filled the place where they were sitting, and they all spoke in tongues. And then Peter preached another sermon there. And uh, what was it? Uh, 3,000 people got saved. Yep. Praise the Lord. And then, so here we are in, in Acts chapter 3, and Peter and John are going down to the temple at the hour of prayer because if you want the anointing, you have to pray. Yep. Can I have an amen? Amen. And so Peter and John said in verse 3, went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered into the temple. He's a hopeless case. He was lame from his mother's womb. He had never walked. Never walked. All he knew to do was to beg for money, because otherwise he would just starve to death. He couldn't work. He couldn't walk. He was lame from his mother's womb, so he got into a the concourse, the religious area, the concourse of people that came through there and asked for alms. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look on us. You know, the anointing sometimes will go through your eyes. I believe there was something about, about that when he said, look on us. There was a connection in the spirit there. One time when I was, I was a young pastor, and I may have told this story before, but it's okay. Um, I, tell, I tell a lot of stories over and over again. I see Paul did too, so it's okay. Uh, but I was a young pastor just getting started, and we, we, had, we were meeting in a community hall and uh, as I was sitting in this community hall people were coming in one of the ladies in our congregation came in an older lady named Marlene and she says oh Pastor Tom uh, Marvin is really hurting today Marvin's her husband and I didn't even know he was going to be there he says he, he really is in pain today well now looking back at it I think she her thought was that I should pray for him. I had no, I, I had no uh, conception or thought of praying for the man. All I had was human sympathy for this poor man that had pain. I'm, I've got my mind on my sermon, and I'm, I'm going to preach the word. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did feel really bad for this man, and I told her so. Well, we started the service. We had our worship. We had our announcements, and I'm preaching the word. I'm preaching on faith in God, you know. And, all of a sudden, it was like the Holy Spirit just took my head and went, and Marvin was sitting over there about where Kobe is with regard to me, you know, that angle. And the Lord just gave me a bead on Marvin, if you know what I mean. Kind of like a, what do they call that? The smart bomb. They take the, uh, uh, some kind of electronic thing, and they beam in on something. That's, the Holy Ghost beamed me in on Marvin. I said, Marvin, you've got to pray for you right now. I just moved my spirit. You've got to pray for you right now. Not later. So the Holy Spirit was moving, and we had to move with it. Amen? Amen. And so I'm, this, I'm a young pastor, but the Holy Spirit's doing his thing. And I walk over to Marvin, and I kneel down next to him, Lay hands on him. In the name of Jesus, we command the pain to go from your body. And I had the congregation also praying and agreeing, agreeing and stretching their hands that way. Well, I went back to the pulpit and to resume my sermon. I looked at Marvin. He says, the pain's all gone. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yep, amen. I called Marvin about maybe eight or ten year, years later. I said, Marvin, how'd you ever come out with that pain that you had? 
he says, I've never had any more pain since that day. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I, as I said, I share these stories over and over again. I was on the radio in that area giving this testimony and uh, telling about how Marvin was healed. Well, his son was listening on the radio, to me on the radio. And I later I saw him, I said, what did you hear me sharing about your father on the radio? He says, yes, I did, that was great. He says, but you didn't tell the whole story. And uh, he, he began to tell me what was wrong with his father. And what it was that he had an injury, he, was, he had a potato business, him and another man had a potato business, and they were loading potatoes into a, into a building. And they had a, a tractor with a PTO and this elevator, which was running an elevator to put the potatoes into the building. And he, of course, had bib overalls like all the farmers did in those days, especially. And he just stepped over the PTO and it caught his pants. And, you know, like that. And began to twist him and it actually pulled the muscle off of his bone. Oh. And somehow or another, his son said it was his superhuman strength. That's what he told me. But somehow or another, in this, all this happening, the tractor died, or he would have died. But as it was, he had this tremendous injury where they actually, the muscle was pulled off the bone. And that's why he had such pain. They patched it together the best they could, but sometimes he had such tremendous pain. And God healed him totally, and he had no more pain. Yeah, amen. 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 And somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So here we are, telling this short story. I'm running out of batteries. And fixing his eyes on him with John, he said, look on us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from him. So he's got his expectation, he's got his expectation out, but he's, he's thinking he's going to get money. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifting him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walking and entered into the temple with him, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. He says, I don't have any silver and gold, but I do have something. What did he have? He had the anointing. He had the power of God. He had Jesus Christ in his life. And you do too. Amen. Amen. God wants to reveal his glory in your life. He wants, he wants you to realize it's not about you. It's not about your intellectual ability. It's not about the failures or weaknesses in your life. It's just about yielding to that anointing and letting him have his way. God will use the simplest people. He uses me even. It's amazing. There's very uneducated people all over the world that will just believe this word. Mm -hmm. Just believe, just educated enough to believe the word. Yep. <laughs> Can I have an amen? amen? Amen. Sometimes we get we make it too complicated. That's why it doesn't work. It's just simple. God lives in you. God wants to heal people. God wants to help people. When you lay hands on somebody, believe yep. that he heals. Yep. And he will heal. Alright, one more portion. I think. No guarantees, but I think one more scripture. <laughs> uh, in the fifth chapter. I have a little trouble finding scripture since I'm using a different Bible than I usually do. Then. All right, so the, uh, fifth, the fifth chapter, the twelfth verse. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the, deaths, the rest dare join them, but the people esteemed them highly. This is right after Ananias and Sapphira died. And uh, 
so that you know they weren't experiencing church growth <laughs> at that time. But people were coming to the Lord. Yep. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord multitudes. Everybody say multitudes. Multitudes. Now this is kind of a relatively sparsely populated area, but there's still multitudes up here. Yep. And God wants them to come to the Lord, man. And he wants to use you to reach people. You can reach people that I can't. You can reach people that pass a rock here. Jim, you can reach people who we can. We all have our circles, right? Yep. Praise God. That we can reach people that the other folks can. We're all missionaries in our own circle. Yep. Amen? Amen. And it said that multitudes came to the Lord. Both men and women, thank God. I love that. In the 15th verse. So that they brought the sick out of the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities. Praise God to Jerusalem. Bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits and they were all healed. We were talking the other night about this verse and how the Holy Spirit fell. Uh, I think King James says overshadowed. Uh, Epikismo epic, or something like that. I don't know exactly the Greek word. But what it means is like to envelop in a haze of glory. So when Peter passed by, the glory fell on his people. The anointing fell upon these people. That's what God wants for us. Sometimes it would mean they would be healed. Sometimes it might mean they would be convicted. Sometimes it might mean that they feel the love of God. You know, I have found a really good response by just praying for people. They talk about something that's going on in their life and just say, well, can I pray for you? Maybe they're not saved. Maybe they're not in a church. You know, you don't need to, you know, um, go through a checklist and make sure they've got everything checked off. Just God loves them. Can I pray for you? And, and, and they'll say, well, yeah, you can pray for me. And you just, just, you just reach over and touch it. You, know, you don't have to, oh, let's say, Lord, no. Sometimes you think the laying on hands has to be this big demonstration. Or sometimes it's just something quiet. You know? God bless you. I pray for you. I pray the Lord will comfort you at this time in your life. I know you've been going through struggles and God sees you. But the Holy Spirit right now can give you comfort and wisdom. And I pray that you would. In Jesus' name. And you know what? Just a simple prayer like that. God touches people with your name. And many times I'll do something like that and I'll look at that person and they'll go, wow. Because they felt something. They felt the love of God. They experienced the love of God. You know what I believe the anointing of God is? It's the love of God in action. That's, that's the love of God in action. See, and sometimes it comes through your words. Sometimes it comes through your eyes. Sometimes it comes through your hands. Sometimes it comes just through your person. Sometimes it comes through intercessory prayer to somebody who smiles away. You can pray here and the anointing comes upon them there. God's anointed you. So, that's a short story about the healing anointing. Amen? Amen. Preach the gospel, love people, follow the prompting, the leading of the Holy Spirit, move with Him, and He'll use you. He'll use you to bring healing. All kinds of healing. Some people may not need physical healing. They might need emotional healing. Some people need healings in their families. Sometimes some people need a healing just to know that God loves them. That's healing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think last night as we were ministering to you, that's what, it was the Father's love that he was expressing to you. And that's, that's very healing, isn't it? Yep. The father, our Father, it was very lonely. 
Here now, little flock, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's just bow our heads before the Lord. And uh, let me just ask this question first, because I always like to do this if I can, I try to remember to do this. Is there anyone here that's been away from the Lord that needs to just, just surrender to Him in prayer tonight? Uh, you need forgiveness and you need just restoration in your relationship with uh, the Father God. If that's you, would you lift your hand? Anyone here tonight? Praise God. All right. Well, let's just pray and, and we'll see what the Lord wants to do. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy. We proclaim your love. We proclaim Jesus Christ. We talk about the anointing. And so we thank you tonight for confirming your word. Your son is following in Jesus' name. <clears throat> and we refuse to take any pressure on this because it's your business, not ours. Yes. Amen. We just thank you, Lord. You get all the glory and you have all the responsibility. So thank you for that. Hallelujah. We're just obedient to do what you said to do. And we thank you for meeting the needs of the people, Lord. Yep. In Jesus' name. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, is there anyone here tonight that needs a miracle in your finances? Now, see, we didn't talk about finances, but the Lord did. God can heal our finances. Now, here's a testimony from Tom Shanklin. I was broke all the time. <laughs> as far as a Christian, I was super broke. Then I became a Christian, and I was still broke. Then I learned about tithing and started tithing, and I was still broke. <laughs> and then I learned about promises and prosperity, and I was still broke. <laughs> and finally, I realized, I need wisdom. I need wisdom. You know how God prospers us? One of the best ways is He gives us wisdom. And for me, I was just always going out and buying stuff on credit. And so I was behind the eight ball, because I not only was I buying the stuff I needed, but I was paying interest to get it, and it just, it just eating me up. I don't know if that's your problem. I'm just giving testimony for you. And God has miracles in finances. You know, he, many times I, I think back to the things that he did. But before I ever came out of it, I had to get wisdom and I had to get some discipline in my life. And when I went into this ministry, I knew I couldn't just keep borrowing money. So I, I actually bought a car. It was like a 2004 uh, Toyota Camry, uh, ugly green, smoker's car. I bought for like $2,500. I scraped together all the cash I could. I bought this car for $2,500. I drove it about 150,000 miles all over the United States, Canada. And I was so tired of that car. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I need a car. I've got to go down to the car dealer and borrow some money and get me a car. The Lord said, no, you're not. <laughs> and 
so I had to believe God. And uh, my wife encouraged me different times, and I thought I, I should, you know, borrow some money. She said, no, don't do it. The Lord's telling you, don't do it. So anyway, I'm believing God, I'm praying for her, and I had agreed. And somebody gave me $5,000 for a car. Oh, he saw, oh. he saw uh, my car. He said, you need a car. That's a miracle, $5,000 for a car. Well, with the amount I was driving, a $5,000 car wasn't going to last too long. You know? So I said, well, that's a good down payment. I'll go buy a car, but $5,000 down payment is a good down payment. The Lord said, no. I'm trying to make this short. Anyway, then, I decided what kind of car I wanted. And I told my son about it. He said that he was checking on the internet. He found one in auction. Same car I was wanting on the auction for sale. And so we scraped together all the money we could, cash, no borrowing. He said, all right, if we can afford it, we'll buy this car. So I got online and I bid for this car. I bid on this car. I bid, 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 bid. I'm at, actually at a meeting. My wife's at home on the computer bidding. I went as high as we could and we lost the bid. Somebody else got the car. I drive home from my meeting in northern Minnesota, and I go past the place, the auction house where it was, and the car's still sitting there. So I drive in, and I said, well, that car's still here. I was bidding on it, but I lost it. He said, well, the guy that got the bid reneged. Yeah. <laughs> he says, you can buy that car now for $5,000. I mean, I'm sorry, for $7,000. I went out and kicked the tires about two times. Called my wife, went back in, and said, I'll take the car. Just right after that, the phone rings to this guy's partner and says, I got a buyer for that car. The banker wanted to buy the car. The guy said, I just sold it. I can hear the guy swearing on the other side. <laughs> I had the car. I bought the car. And um, when I sold the Toyota, I got 1900 so. I bashed the bathroom with the $5,000, $1,900. I paid $100 for the car plus tax. And that's how I began to come out of debt. I just, that was, that was the point. See, I had to trust God. And God did some other things, and now I'm actually totally out of debt. And uh, he's no respect for a person. Yeah. What he did for me, he'll do for you. Yeah. So let's pray for me and Susanna. Stretch your hands this way. God is a miracle worker. He's our healer. Praise God. Lord, I just I just feel compassion for them because I know Lord what it's like. And, and so, Lord, I, I, first of all, I want to pray for their emotions. I just pray for great emotions, fear and frustration, too. And I pray the peace of God passes on understanding. And, and Lord, here's what I pray tonight. I pray that, that um, as they give this situation to you, that you give them a rest and a peace in their soul. And as they acknowledge that you are the answer, that you begin to minister to them with the even creative thinking and wisdom. And Lord, that you begin to take steps in their lives that will lead them to the health in their marriage, in their finances, in their physical bodies, in their life. Lord, you redeem our life from destruction and crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, for this couple. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. Abraham's blessing is upon you. Abraham was rich in silver and cattle and gold. And we just say, man, the blessing of the Lord will be upon you. Susanna, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Yes. You are blessed. And you know, the circumstances may not agree with that, but the word of God is true. Yes. You are blessed. 
and you are not cursed. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord will give you steps to honor him. And will show you the steps of faith you are to take. One by one, step by step, and you will open doors before you too. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And, and I see it, I see a field. It's a wide field, a wide open field. And that just it just speaks to me that there's there's more than you can actually know of this. Is. God will open your vision to see it. You know, Abraham, he had to open his vision. He says, walk through the land, and I will give it to you. And so, Lord, I just pray for a spirit of faith to come upon them. That they can walk in the light of faith in the Lord God, and faith in the Son of God, but Lord, what your Lord truly tr tr says for them in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just, I just pray that you Take the weight off my brother's shoulders. Mm -hmm. and, please, and give them a miracle. Yes. Give them a miracle. The time this is. Yes. But not only one miracle, but a change in their life. Um, that will sustain them all the days of their life. Yes. And that they will not only be blessed, they will not only be enhanced, but they will be a blessing to many others in Jesus' name. Yes. I, I, Lord, I, I pray from my brother's heart that it will become strong in him and he will rise with faith in his heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, and with boldness he will proclaim the word of God. In Jesus' name. Even in the face of adversity, adversity and contrary circumstances, he will proclaim the word of God. And he will see the hand of God move in power and power. Jesus. And everybody say, Dan and Susanna, and Susanna, you are blessed. You are blessed. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. Amen. One more word. One more word. Just two words that the Spirit will say. No guilt. Say that. No guilt. Christ is a guilt offering. He's taken it away. No guilt. Just move forward. He's leading the way. You're following this way. You did. You just follow him all the way up. And he'll bring you up. I invite the congregation to just say this with me for them. No guilt. No guilt.
We command all the pain to go and come out more in Jesus' name. We command restoration and perfect healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. So, go and be healed. Amen. <laughs> well, by the way, we're not telling you not to go to God. If you need to go, it's okay. Uh, I wanted to mention something there. You may have noticed when I prayed for her, I commanded. Some people are like, well, wow, how can you command? Well, if you look at what the, in the scriptures, that's how they minister. Remember, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He commanded. Jesus ministered the same way. And the uh, disciples ministered the same way. And by the way, we're not commanding God. We're commanding for God by the authority that he gave us. Amen. 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 Now, does anyone have pain in your body tonight? All right, Ruth, come on up. All right. Uh, where's Rosemary? Come on, Rosemary, we'll put you to work. You're anointed. Put some of you to work tonight, okay? All right, so why don't you just talk to her? Just, you know, you, you just take this role here. Come down here. And just talk to her and find out what's going on. So. Ruth, in the 
in the name of Jesus be loosed from that pain. Amen. Name. I command the healing of Jesus Christ to come into this place. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus.
Now wait, I'm going to get that on you. You run up and down the aisle. <laughs> Anybody here believe Jesus can give you a miracle tonight? Yes. Praise God. Who needs a healing tonight? Come on. Right. Praise the Lord. All right, All right Elizabeth. I'm going to put you to work on. You're anointed. Everybody say, Elizabeth, you're anointed. Elizabeth, you're anointed. Amen. Amen. So you come over here and I'm going to do all your ministry. Oh, you know he is. <laughs> you just talk to him. So. Yep. Okay, I've had trouble with certain thoughts on her and my fingers. Like, it's, uh, like, trigger thumb or trigger finger. Oh, yeah. I just experienced that. I actually went to therapy yesterday to see if we can do some exercises, but I've had it for several months, so, so it helps me roll those around stiff, and it's being cool. I've seen this heal, by the way. Yep. Testimony on a video from a woman that had triggered a thumb. I had never heard of it. Yeah. It's caused by inflammation. Yeah, there's some inflammation. You have other inflammation in your hands, too? Uh, well, 10 years ago, I moved into this finger. I had, um, I had triggered thumb, and then I had a finger I didn't know what was, you know, like, alcohol oh, machine at that time, so that was a long time ago. So it's not new, it's just been a long time, and it's kind of spreading into other Time to go. Fingers. Yes, yes time, time to go. Come on. All right, so you just grab those hands. Take authority. In Jesus' name. Deserve it. Yeah. You received it through what you did on the cross. 
Yes. Yes. She got some relief, but she still had pain. She went home, and she actually, the second one was a stronger believer. She knew more. She went home, and she walked the floor. She said, in the name of Jesus, devil, get out of here. And she stood her ground, and she commanded the devil to go. And he did. <laughs> she got healed, too. Yeah. 
Now, why one guy healed just so easy, the other one had to work at it a little bit? I don't know. But that's, hey, however you get it, you get it. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, having done all to stand. Amen. And I know that sometimes we need to use our faith. I'll give you another testimony about inflammation. This is my wife because she has had a lot of problems with inflammation in her joints, her hands, her feet, her knees. And we have prayed and believed. And uh, it's not that we just prayed and it didn't work and we didn't believe. We kept believing, we kept thanking the Lord, kept praying. And we just continued to exercise our faith. But, you know, the symptoms were still there, in fact, getting worse. And so finally she said, well, I'm going to go to the doctor. So she went to the doctor, and they tested her for rheumatic, uh, what do they call it, rheumatoid arthritis, and she did not have that. They said, it's inflammation, and they prescribed, you know, ibuprofen and Advil, that kind of thing. So now she knew what it was, inflammation. So she started researching on the web and finding out about inflammation and she got a book by someone on foods that cause inflammation and she started making some changes in her diet. And that book helped her some but she wasn't quite satisfied and then she got another book by a doctor which was probably a little more informed. And she made some changes in her diet and all of a sudden her hands started getting freed up. And so it was by the wisdom that God gave her, you know, that she's doing